Okay, so today, guys, we are back with another episode of Punt on Open. And today I am very excited to be able to welcome on Big Steeler. Big Steeler, how are you doing, lad? I'm good, mate. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, it's an absolute honor. I, I've obviously popped in and out of the stream every now and again. I've always thought of asking you of coming on. Obviously, we have a, a mutual friend in Ben Abadby. Well, I don't know how much of a friend you'd call him. This, this, he's like a distant relative these days to me. Yeah, um, I, uh, I've known Ben for a long old time, yeah. but we still keep in touch. So yeah, I would, I would call him a good friend. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm honored to have you on. You obviously don't do this kind of thing very often. So I'm very, very excited to look at some hands. There might be some people that don't know who you are, unfortunately for you. If you could enlighten the ones that don't, who you are, what you play, what you've been doing with your life, etc. So obviously I'm a big stealer on PokerStars, um, which sadly we don't play that much anymore. I've been playing since about 2011, so I'm a bit of a dinosaur. Started off playing Sit and Goes, uh, which I did through to about 2016 with the Supernova Elite stuff, and then moved to MTTs. And then over the pandemic, moved, and I was already faffing and messing around with 500 Zoom, but uh, moved over to cash full time in the pandemic. And yeah, here we are, still grinding, playing like anything between 400 NL and 2K across multiple sites. Yeah. Cool. So I think we've got, uh, even though you said that PokerStars is not really going to be a main game anymore, we pretty much have only PokerStars today. Yes, that's yeah. right, actually. Yeah. So we've got, it's over like the, these hands, like I think from the last, I've, I actually delved deep into the database. I love it when find, do that, uh, the vault. Obviously, I, I play so fantastically. It was hard to find. Yeah, puns. obviously, obviously. Yeah, yeah but um, no, I delved deep into the database. So I think there, there might be one from like 2022, but nice. I think they are all from Stars, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I like when people dig into the vault. I've been trying to get Ben to to give me this hand. He told me about a hand once and he said, it's so far deep in the vault, it might as well be Gringotts because he's never letting me see it. Maybe I've one heard day. about it. You've I've heard about it. it. I've never seen yeah, it either. Yeah. Well, maybe one day. <laughs> but I appreciate you digging deep. Uh, yeah. You've reliably informed me that there's some there's some really good ones in here. Are, are you happy, content that I haven't violated the integrity of the show? I haven't seen any of these hands before. This is the first time I'm going to be seeing them. You content with that? I trust you. I take this very seriously. So the rules, if you didn't know, guys, the contestant today is Big Stealer, brings on five hands, and I will decide whether they are a punt or no punt. Now, here's where I always enter my disclaimer. Just because I'm making the decisions, guys, doesn't mean I think I'm better than who I've got on the show. That's certainly not true today, and it's been you know, not true pretty much every single time I've done one of these shows. But it is my show, and I don't care what you think. I'll be deciding whether he wins or he loses, and obviously it's a best of five if you punt more than you don't, you're going to lose. If you if you no punt more than you do punt, then you will win, big stealer. So, are you happy with everything? Are you ready to take a six of spades? Thrilled with the idea of it. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Okay, guys, hand number one with big stealer. We've got a six of spades. We are three-handed on PokerStars playing 1K reg tables, I imagine. Correct, yeah. And we are going to open up the small blind. Looks good. 3X, anything that's like standard or not even, not that interesting, we're just going to skip over, if you don't mind, unless you think there's something that I've missed. You more yeah, than welcome to bring up, it. but something like this, we are not going to delve into. Um, we raise a call. We see a flop of four, seven, six with two clubs, and probably doing a lot of checking. Although, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could go into like the theory of throwing some small bets in here, but it's going to be so infrequent that I will probably just simplify to range check here. Mm -hmm. I just think it's easier to play. Not really. Worth it, unless you have extremely strong reads on a very small player pool. I wouldn't be messing around with too much C betting on a uh, two tone, very connected, th two possible straights kind of board. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to be playing probably pure check here. Yep, big fan of that, and certainly won't be complaining about that. No punt so far. Uh, half pot we see, <laughs> half pot we see from our opponent, which seems as reasonable as any. And I think we can just pretty much only call here. Any note for anything else? I like call. I have run some sims for this, but like, yeah, I'm, I'm, going for, I, I would, I would just play call for this. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, sounds good. Yep. Yeah. So far, so good. We turn a six. I'm um, just thinking about any donks. I don't think so. Although you might disagree. I so in game, I did think like in normal, like when somebody bets here half pot on the flop, they should have quite a merged range. Mm -hmm. You could argue they'd use a small sizing and there'd be more merged, but typically half pot just plays pretty similarly blind v blind so they should have like quite a wide range of hands including 6x but obviously less 6x than they would 7x and of course the stronger hands would fit into this into the half pot sizing too so but obviously like we are now densely around this we probably have some sort of draw or we have a seven or a six so whereas they can be going wild with like 
like queen eight or something like uh with a club or just something completely disconnected like a, a jack deuce of spades for example so they they are potentially wider around this board than us and we have greater density so we can potentially lead but i just reasoned in game that i would lead but not that often because the ace leaves so many more bluffs open and I thought that that would unlock more bluffs and potentially get more EV for our hand. So I decided to check this most of the time. Sounds really good to me. Um, I have to say, strong suit is certainly not donk bets in single race pop blind blind. So I'm not <laughs> going <laughs> to... Yeah, this looks absolutely fine. We see another large bet. Um, yeah. What do you think this says about our opponent's hand? Are they basically saying they don't have a seven anymore? I would imagine so. Something yeah, I would that. say... Yeah, I would say it's very unlikely, especially human beings. Typically, they won't be like merging with an A7 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think the best, sorry, the worst value hand they have now is probably pocket eights, hoping that we have some sort of seven. And they probably are checking that a decent amount of the time. So they're like definitely more weighted towards uh, a six themselves or a straight in their value region, but they still have infinite numbers of bluffs potentially they're yeah. going to have a lot of uh, club club draws um a lot of 5x they have a lot of off suit 5x as well so you know um they have a king five off in their range for example and some people defend even wider than that and have like queen five off which i don't have but some people do that um i didn't have a particular read that this guy would do that but he for sure will have a lot of suited 5x as well so like jack five of hearts will be in there for example and based on that range you're probably not going to be check raising this I guess. Uh, you for sure can. Like, we have the strongest 6x, of course. And if yeah. our opponent has decided to bet, like, um, an 8-6 on the flop and go and go with it, you can check raise here. But again, this is one of those ones where I rolled again for the check uh, raise or the check call. I decided to go with uh, the check call. Well, what would your bluffs look like here if you were going to be... Checking? I think you, generally speaking, like, just have to go with something that's very high equity. You can't really, when range this wide... Um, be particularly like when when ranges get very very tight you can start like focusing enormously on blockers mm -hmm. um but in this situation because you just have to choose something that has reasonable equity i'd have thought um any sort of combination of like combo draw would be like pretty useful that you didn't check raise the flop mm -hmm. but that said you'd have to be very very um careful with that because you've got the chance of them just three bet shoving and potentially blowing you off your equity um there are going to be I'd imagine maybe some hands that might just want to check raise fold, like a let's just say an eight x of hearts or something like that. Uh, you could potentially do that. They'll be blocking the six x region a little mm. better, um, and potentially some straights. So stuff maybe maybe, but I typically the thing is with this, you don't have to find many bluffs when you have such a narrow value region. So you would probably be fine just using like a strong combo draw. Um, okay. five extra clubs that you didn't check raise the flop with which is fine because you could you would typically do that with a hand as strong as king five of clubs sometimes or ace five of clubs because you have showdown value with it mm -hmm. um so yeah i don't know maybe maybe a small fraction of those sorts of hands to go with obviously a very small value range too yep sounds really good i have no complaints so far eee. i have complaints about this river as as, as hero um <laughs> I guess we are almost certainly going to check. I can't see yeah, any reasons to don't care. Yeah, I mean, we we don't really get to the river with many 8x anymore, where he mm. could have blasted off Jack 8 of hearts or something like yeah. that, whereas we're just check folding that sort of thing on the flop. No, not on the flop, on the turn, excuse me. I think it's a very simple float on the flop, um, whereas on the turn, we just aren't going to stick around with a naked gut shot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, he gets there with a lot of that sort of hand, um, including some offsuit versions of that, which would be like Jack A off and Queen A off, which I don't open for three X in the small blind. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we uh, we definitely have an eight X disadvantage in this situation. Yeah, pun on no pun's a bit of a spoiler here because we all know what's about to happen because it's here. So we're gonna check. They're gonna bet two thirds pot, and you're three quarters, gonna... three quarters, three quarters, three quarters pot, and yeah, you're gonna yeah. talk to me about why. I mean, I can see the merits already, but why this okay. is why this is uh, something you're going to use to check shove? Well, even though we don't have as much ADEX, we certainly have quite a few boats. Yeah. Um, yes, there is a psychopathic part of me that would check raise some boats on the turn just because I think it would get the most money in against an equity-driven range. Um, we also get here with hands very, very normally with hands like pocket fives that's a very very standard yeah, hand for us to get there with and we're going to have like uh six five as well pretty much in full 
Um, I don't see any reason to check raise 6-5 on the turn and we get there like every single time like this. Admittedly, it's only one combo. Uh, pocket 7s, again, another example of a hand that I just don't see much reason to check raise the flop or turn. Yes, we can check raise the flop a little bit, but again, one of the... We don't... It's a little bit different blind v blind because again, ranges are so wide, but when the nuts changes so often uh, from flop to river, check raising sets versus a bet which typically isn't super merged, it is merged, but isn't super merged, um, isn't a brilliant idea. Again, we are with wider ranges here, so of course we're going to get called by a lot of worse things, but the nuts varies over so many different runouts that it's better to kind of get through a safer runouts before piling in money with them, yeah. uh, with a set. So typically I wouldn't check raise sevens that much. Again, this is this is like potentially a gross simplification, and you said blind v blind single raise pots isn't your strength. It's not mine either. I just use a lot of simplifications, and one day hopefully I'll be good at them. Yeah. Um, but... I think I get here with quite a lot of boats, so yeah, that's the that's the merit to potentially being aggressive in this node through a check raise. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to want to bluff, it almost certainly feels like we want to have a six. Um, mm. You know, they're going to. We have... don't have seven four suited, which would be a really really nice one. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. I get, they have seven six off and six five off. Yeah, they should yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, they should have both of those, which again makes the six very very appealing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think there's any merit to just calling? Do you think you win? Yes, yeah? I do. I do. And I, I rolled for this. Um, the only thing that makes, I think, I was, I, look, I was completely horny for the idea of raising here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I really, really wanted to raise. Yeah. But I said I'm not going to raise 100% because if I'm doing this with a six of hearts and a six of spades 100% yeah. of the time, I do think it's going to be too often. Again, sure. we're, we're, I'm going to be get here with seven five as well, which is tempting to check raise. And I... Yeah, I just try and remain because I know what my image is like. I I stupidly a few years ago, a couple of years ago, posted a graph uh, of my red line. Which, oh, yeah, um, that was foolish. My ego wanted it, and the the result is yeah, the result is people don't fold very much anymore. So like I I wanted to raise here because I think the properties of this hand are really good. But I'm sort of trying to Ben's amazing at this, by the way. Sorry, shout out to Ben about B. Um, he's awesome. very aware of like what his value is and when he's wider than he should be because for some reason he's peeled wider against a, a recreational or whatever. I'm aware that my value range here is narrow and what I'm trying to represent. So I have to be very careful that I have a six off, for example, and yeah. a six of hearts and seven five suited. So I did roll for it, even though I think this is like a really, really nice hand to raise. Um, the other side of the coin is, are people just going to fold straights against me? And yeah. that's what I'm trying to... Uh, like a, a very, very good rule of thumb is don't try and make people fold good hands. Um, I love but that rule. when you arrive, when you arrive with like, and you have a plethora of good hands, you can't just check shove and be um, a blue line warrior the whole whole time of your life. So, um, feel attacked. Yeah, I um, sorry, I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard a tangent, but I, after your ten NL um, challenge and you posted your red line, yeah. I fucking loved so much. It was so good. yeah, I, but I do give a fair, shit. I think we're all gonna if we're gonna win that challenge. We're going to blue line it. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the argument for, but there's obviously a strong argument against. Yeah. Also a little nuanced thing as well. <laughs> um, apparently, actually, no, no, I'll, 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 I'll let the, uh, I'll let the, uh, the, the hand roll and we'll, yeah, okay. uh, we'll talk about that at the end. Yeah. So I always give my, um, obviously always give my result before the, res I always give my verdict before the result comes out. And I, I don't think there's enough merit to me punt. I don't think I can punt this. I mean, it seems like pretty intuitive. We really want to have a six. You might be overdoing it, but you've definitely, you've said you've rolled. Yes, we don't like getting people to try, try and get people to fold good hands. But, you know, I, I, I just don't think there's enough reason for me to say this is a punt. So I'm going to go with no punt. You're going to go up one nil. Um, yeah. So this, this was my banker. I was pretty confident on this one. <laughs> yeah, I like it. But I mean, this is your banker, then. I'd I can't wait to see the rest. We do get it through, which is incredibly this was max exciting. Time bank. Max, max time bank. Time bank. That is the most I'm, satisfying thing ever, isn't it? Yeah, like I just, I was so ready for him just to like ping eight nine suited. Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah. Um, that's the other thing that also is potentially dreadful is that he has eight nine off in his range. Mm. But I could have argued that eight nine suited is like a very high frequency three bet, and eight nine off is three bet like quarter of the time yeah. so he doesn't have as much eight nine in there as he probably should do you think nine uh, always calls probably good. sorry do you think nine eight just has always call i think i think yeah he never has boat oh no he does have boat sorry he excuse me um yeah he i think eight nine off yeah i think it's very very likely a call i think eight seven off is an always call but is like a very fractional turn bet so yeah i think like there's like he's kind of stripped of calls that aren't boats if okay. he doesn't call eight nine off okay sounds good um so yeah 
But the nuanced thing when I ran the sim was that spades aren't preferred because they don't block six four suited as much. Um, and hearts are like massively preferred. Oh, okay. But I think that people, um, I, don't, I don't think it matters that much in practice. No, I think sure. like, there's going to be a lot more 8x barreled. And yeah, I think there was another thing to do with, I, I looked at the sim and I was like, oh, no one's doing that. So it yeah, doesn't yeah. really matter. But yeah. yeah, I can see why A6 arts would be better, but I mean, who cares? It's going to be minute details. Anyway, yeah, yeah, the yeah. most important details, you're at 1-0. With four hands to go, apparently all of which are more questionable than this. So without further ado, let's go and take hand number two. Okay, we've got Ace-King in this next hand, and we do have hidden names for this one. Big Stealer, at your request. Um, why is that? Well, first and foremost, I don't know like if you're... Your viewing, um, your viewers are all uh, professionals, but Mostly we have not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but um, the guy who three bets here, like he is a very specific recreational. So if he was to watch it and this and that, I wouldn't want him to feel offended. But sure. the guy who three bets me here in um, in the hijack, he is a very splashy uh, player uh, from Switzerland. He has a lot of fun playing and. That's we fun. all have fun playing That's with him. Um, but uh, the guy, we end up in a very, very weird spot um, versus the button. And I was making some assumptions that I don't want to like look like I'm shit talking him. It's just based on the reads that I have, mm. even though they can be completely irrelevant to this spot because it is so unique. So I, when we get to the point where we talk about whether it's punt or no punt, it trust, trust me, it's completely <laughs> subjective. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure you're a great fit for this channel, to be honest. No shit-talking and lots of respect for our opponents. Oh, no, no, there's going to be lots of shit-talking. I just just want people to know that, you know, I don't mean it. (laughs) Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And without that other way, Ace, King, Ace of Spades, King Hearts, we're going to open up to 2.5 under the gun. Which, by the way, I think is a mistake because the guy is a 20 big blind uh, in the big blind, so I should have probably minned this. That said, everyone else is full stacks. I don't think I made the decision in-game that, oh, everyone else is full stacks or more, so I'm going to go 2.5x. But typically, if the big blind is 20 big blinds or 30 big blinds or a recreational and has a shorter stack i will go min just so i can widen my range a little bit and not be worried about being reshoved on but under the gun i guess i can get away with it sounds good we get three bet by villain five this is the player in, in question this is our yeah. swiss friend who okay. um splashy recreational like I'm, when i say that like most recreationals who he's, he's actually a pretty good recreational and he i think his three bets like 11 percent global which is high for a lot of but I mean, you get a recreational right. If his if his three bets above seven, it's going to be like twenty eight. Yeah. But this guy actually is quite he's quite well measured with it all, and he okay. plays like forty one twenty six, but with an eleven percent three bet. So like his three bet frequencies aren't bad at all. Okay. But that in that said, it it is kind of mood dependent. Mm-hmm. So that's why this next bit is just like oh shit. Okay. So yeah. villain two, I assume based on what you said, knows that villain five is this guy. And I would assume so, yeah. So yeah. what do you think that means about his cold four bet range? That's exactly it. So there are a couple of ways you can look at it. This guy, he he turns up so I played against this guy heads up at the end of games before, and he's competent. He's a good he's a regular regular who I see at five hundred, I've seen him at two hundred a lot. I think two hundred is still his game, but he pops up at one K when a recreation is around. So I'm I'm being careful to not call him a bum hunter, but it does seem like you would never see him reg battling three handed. So I think like he knows who where the action's coming from in this game, and he probably specifically knows what this guy's like. So I would assume that he should be in here with maybe as wide as Ace Jack suited, Ace Five suited wouldn't be unreasonable. Okay, hands like that. Uh, but you know, Ace Queen suited is absolutely standard cold four bet regardless of the player. Uh, Ace Jack suited, I don't. I think it's very, very infrequent for this this formation. But if you're in the big blind with this, ace jack suited becomes more appealing. King queen suited becomes more appealing because you don't have two more players behind. So if he would, if he did turn up with ace jack suited, let's just say it goes me fold and the guy calls and it gets to the river and he's got ace jack suited, I'd just be like, well, that's completely standard. I'd be like, yeah. well, he's made a good assumption there because this guy is a wider fish. But obviously, ace jack suited. If you're just doing that all the time, is way too much considering the, um, the positions and the players you've got behind as well. Okay, so you've got quite you've got some options here. Fold being probably the absolute worst. Calling is a bit weird. So you've got some maybe some clicks and you've got maybe some some sh- maybe some shoves. I mean, we are quite deep, 150. Uh, well, about 140 to start. Yeah. What are your thoughts on your options? I think shove could be a thing. Uh, there's 320 in the middle already, mm. so I'd be 
you know, it, it is risking a fair amount. <laughs> yeah. I, I decided that because I don't close the action, I thought flick fold to villain five, i.e. the recreational, was yeah. like not a bad thing because he's absolutely never getting in there with yeah, Queen. Sure. Um, so I thought clicking to like a small size, which is like a standard five bet size, actually. Like when you five bet, you're basically, if you're going over like much over 2x, it's a bit of a mistake. Yeah. Um, just because you're wrapping such a polar range. And I was sort of, I didn't know what I would do <laughs> if the other guy went in um, yeah. for you know for fourteen hundred effective. Well, he knows um, that you I'm know not... that he knows, so it's like yeah, yeah. I actually I think in in game I I made a very clear decision that if he shoves like he never ever has aces mm. because he's just going to trap. Yeah, I think he's quite. I've I've played against him before in a few situations where he's just called uh, a four bet with aces. So with a five bet and the SPR is going to be very very low. I can imagine he would only shove ace king kings and maybe a fraction of queens. So those odds are too good at that point. But I wouldn't have been excited about it. I'd have expected kings to be turned over a lot. Okay. So you do click. Yeah. Which seems really reasonable. Villain five folds. And yeah. we see a call. So I think it's important to recognize that we almost never, ever play five bet pots Yeah. at 1K. Almost never. Because no one really ever gets deep enough mm. and i've given him like if we just click back one i want to see the price i gave him so like he's getting like almost like yeah he's getting 22 percent. so he's getting almost four to one yeah it it is like people have fight or flight in these situations so like you could end up calling too much here or you could end up just calling aces mm. or kings or something so this is why this has become like a very weird hand yeah so yeah good to know i mean also i have i have i'd imagine a fairly aggressive image okay so people might he can go one of two ways with that. So, so very, this is obviously very good flop. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, well, obviously yeah. just small bets seem completely reasonable with everything. And that's what you do decide to do. I went 20%. You could go smaller, I yeah. guess. To be honest. With five bet pots, generally speaking, because your range is essentially, in theory, supposed to be aces, kings, and not very much else, a fraction mm. of bluffs, ace, king, you can bet most boards pretty aggressively. Okay. And he calls it. Spade turn. Seems like a reasonable candidate, candidate to throw in a check with. You're definitely going to want to check you know, at least some of the time here. Yeah. I actually don't think it matters. Okay. Like, obviously, I mean, I don't think it changes anything for me because I have the ace of spades. He just never, ever has a flush. He should never have a flush that doesn't have an ace in it. Sure. So the question is, like, how do I make money with this hand? And mm -hmm. because, like, I have no fucking idea what his range is right now. Well, I know I know two hands that very clearly will be in there. Yeah. And one of them uh, rhymes with race, race. <laughs> and, and then you've got, like kings that are in there but like how do i make money from a range that i don't know how wide it is like do yeah. i overestimate how much he's got in his range because I, I gave him a good price or do i assume he's got a really good hand and just check and hope that yeah. he doesn't put money in yeah um or do, do i assume that he somehow gets here with tens like he was using a linear uh four bet range and then called because of the amazing price hmm. and he's bluffing with tens with a spade i don't know so i i thought that it was more likely i would like I've got a really good hand, right? In an absolute terms, it's yeah. a pretty good hand. With range v range, it's like fucking awful. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I thought that the best way I make money is maybe somehow finding him, like getting him to bluff. But I don't know how the hell he bluffs. So I decided because he has no flushes, I just check and yeah. yeah. Seems good then. I mean, if he has no flushes, then maybe he doesn't want to reopen too much here. Yeah, um, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, obviously he doesn't know you have ace of spades, but. Uh, it's yeah. something you can have. He does decide to reopen for about a third pot ish. Yeah. Uh, just under yeah. 27. And I mean, we just call. We just have to call, right? You'd think so, wouldn't you? Uh, okay. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. <laughs> the curveball. Yeah, yeah, we just call. <laughs> the river's a seven. I mean, yeah. <sighs> I mean, I he think has ace king, he has no spade. So. Yeah, he only shoves ace king if he has a spade. Yeah. But that's not really relevant. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe I might be out of line and go with ace queen of spades because I think that he's linear four betting or something. But yeah, like it really doesn't matter if he has aces, right? Like it's it's whatever. Like he's trying to get value out of this sort of hand with aces plus. So would you rather call ace king without the ace of spades? Just so he can be, you can chop. <laughs> like, this is why it's a fucking weird hand. In the end, I think the, the question is, if I'm not calling this, I'm calling kings full and aces with and a spade. Aces, yeah. Or just aces. Like, just I aces, don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm just calling that those, those two hands, which seems gross given four to one. So the question is, like, this is why, like, 
I was careful like to have names not on here because I don't I don't want to, to be like talking shit about this guy's never bluffing. Yeah. But I think it's very, very reasonable to assume this guy is never bluffing, given it's a five bet pot. But in the end, I just convinced myself that, well, obviously I have Ace King with a spade. And I just said, well, maybe, maybe he sometimes, because of the odds, sometimes yeah. I just need him sometimes to get here with Jacks of the Spade and decide it's not good, or Tens of the Spade and decide it's not good, or maybe Ace Five suited somehow, um, which like I was stretching. And it's a very good rule of thumb when a population under, under bluffs generally. If you're stretching to find hands that people bluff, you should probably overfold. Yeah. So the question is, do you think that I should overfold? And if... If I do, how how far how far do I overfold by? I mean, the dynamics of this this hand are really really interesting. I I, I just I'm struggling really hard to to fault you for calling here and needing twenty percent. But at the same time, if he doesn't, if he never bluffs and he never never shoves the same hand, and he certainly never shoves a worse hand for value, do we even have that? I actually don't know. Um, which seems just absolutely insane, but also just completely true. Um, I, I watched your Alan F thing, uh, Alan F punt no punt, where yeah. he um, raised folded aces, top set aces. Yeah, and I was just like, God, and he was getting insane odds, and I was yeah. just like, Well, this is not the same, <laughs> yeah. but it's not a not million miles yeah. from it. I mean, I, yeah. I just find it very, very difficult to to punt you. I mean, I I would stretch myself to the point where I'd be like, okay, it's such a small river jam, like less than third pot, that maybe he could just have ace king without a spade one time, and we can chop. I don't even know if that's enough, but I'm not going to punt you for calling. I, I can't do it because I'd just call and lose. I can't believe I'm going to win 5-0. <laughs> so it is 2-0, but uh, in reality, <laughs> it's just aces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In reality, so, I lose $1,500. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, but you did win another point on punt and no punt. So, you know, what's... Swings and roundabouts. You know, you know when I was yeah. playing this hand, that's what gave me yeah. solace. <laughs> so we do lose that one, but we are two 0 up, which means you only need to win one of the last three hands in order to win this. Um, this I, is this I is interesting though. I wonder it what people think about this one. It might yeah. be a struggle. I'm glad to hear that. Let's go ahead and take hand number three. Okay, hand number three with with Big Steer up two nil. He's absolutely stealing it here, and we've got, got seven eight. <laughs> we've got seven eight of diamonds. I'm feeling like I might be quite harsh with this one, unless I'm absolutely sure it's, it's a no punt. I don't want to get... I don't, who wants you to win 3-0? Come on, that'd be so boring. Let's hope this is terrible. You want to, <laughs> you want to win 5-0. It's yeah. never happened before, but I'm, I'm not going to stand in your way if you deserve it. So we get a defend from the big blind here. Nothing to say. Um, this board, big bet check. This hand. I'm fed, I'm fed up of telling people to not bet small on this board. Yeah. I mean, I learned this a little... I, I only know how to play... Uh, single raised pot against the big blind on these board textures. <laughs> the rest... That's it. No, when, when, you get, when you get into early position, because your opponent has more and more ace-queen off and a little bit of ace-queen yeah, suited. It's two-thirds, yeah? No, no, no. You have over bet and a tiny bit of small bet, but okay. why the fuck you'd want to do yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does this hand fit into over bet? I mean, it, I mean, it does... If you over bet, they just fold like jack-10 off, right? Yeah, but you've had absolute dog absolute shit. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, so this is too I bad. I can't think of a hand that improves less. Okay. Yeah, this is actually completely, com completely garbage. Like, yeah, yeah. like five six is better because we just have the the backdoor bug draw. So we do check because it's so unbelievably bad that we can't believe it. And the turn is yeah. an eight. Now, yeah. and then they start betting, which is very interesting because the eight actually removes quite a lot of the the best hands they can have. Oh. Whoa, this guy, he knows, he knows some shit. Yeah, I well, you, this, could influence, against the big line, man. this could influence something that happens yeah. in a second. Yeah. yeah, so obviously, like, the best hands they're going to have here are, like, obviously they're going to have deuces and, and they're going to have ace-queen sometimes and they're going to have, you know, that that's, that, that's it for the non-eight hands. But then they're going to have queen-eight, ace-eight, and pocket-eights. It's, like, a lot of the value yeah. range. Yeah, so, yeah. So... I like it. And obviously you're going to have checkbacks with like aces. What, and what do you like? What do you like? <laughs> I, you like having, I like having an eight and you've obviously alluded okay. to that we might be doing something. I like having an eight. Okay. We do decide to raise and obviously we can hit an eight and we can hit a seven. I don't know if they, if they call, I'm not sure how much we want to seven, <laughs> but um, which does scare me. Like, I, oh. I, I don't know if we'd just rather have like, I mean, we're going to check back Jack and a heart sometimes. Is that better to use? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. all of these, there's no, there's no, um, the only hand I think that bets purely is ace queen. Yeah. I think everything else, including maybe deuces goes purely, but even queens checks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, with that in mind, it means there is no drawing hand that you can bet purely. Okay. In fact, 
yeah, yeah. That, that's just a thing. When they over, how often does our range raise? Oh, God. Good question. Uh, well, eights, I think, is basically pure. Aces will mix because often your opponent, when he do, when they do this, yeah. is going to be equity driven or have like a reasonably strong hand. So mm. you 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 the reason one of the reasons that you so I I think I raise half pot here. The, one of the reasons is for that is so that your value range can still get value from the weakest part of their range, including yeah. draws like Jack Ten and stuff like that. And they're incentivized to call because what you're representing will often go for stacks regardless of if they fill up. So Jack-10 can still find calls. I think it mixes, uh, especially if it's got a heart in its hand, it will fold. But hands like that will call. So yeah, you, you, you the aces will find some raises, but still some calls, of course, because it, it locks up so much for the board. Eights is basically pure. Queen-8 suited is very, very aggressively played as well. Ace-8, I believe, does a lot of calling. And I mean... I say deuces, or if deuces ever checked, it, I mean, I would never check it, but then deuces would obviously be, I think, I think actually deuces is one of those funny ones because it loses to eight still, so it makes a lot of its EV from just bluff catching. Okay. Um, not bluff catching, but letting your opponent continue with a shite hand and, and uh, raising the river as well. So, yeah, I think deuces, if you did check it, which I never would, it would find the occasional call, but mainly raise as well. Queens, of course, would be the okay. same. It would be raised most of the time. And I'm just thinking about, like, if, if we're doing this all the time, are we doing it too often? I mean, we don't have that much A-text. I imagine that you wouldn't use all of it. Like, you've only got 8, 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, jack 8, I guess. So, yeah, I would use, and I did use, mainly hands that would block the queen-8 suited combo. Yeah. Like, eight, the 8 and the ace are already uh, the same suit, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, and also, I don't think it's brilliant to have a 10 or a 9 in your hand because you want your opponent to have the most number of folds when you're doing this. This isn't one of those ones where we're, we're getting some better hands to fold and some worse hands to call. We are just wanting maximum number of folds. This is essentially a bluff now. Um, and it's because he's polarized so much, we're looking to remove uh, what I talked about earlier with uh, Blind v Blind, where it's too, too wide. When he goes... 133% pot here. He's representing a two pair plus hand or like maybe an ace jack occasionally. So we're, we're searching for folds here and the blockers are very important because he has such a narrow range. Yep. Yep. Certainly don't mind it. I'm not, I'm not thrilled with, with not getting a fold on the turn, but we shall see the river, which is the six of diamonds. Now mm. I am going to ask an important question. Do you think it's a good idea to try and get this guy to fold a very good hand here? And can you not, can you not check back and win? You're right. <laughs> you shouldn't try and get people to fold a good hand. Here. So, um, so this, uh, he didn't. Look, I'm just, you know what happens. Obviously, he obviously obviously he checks. I shove, um, and I do. Do we just get to the result and then we talk about the hand? I mean, I have to give my I have to give my verdict before that. Okay, okay. okay. Um, so, if you but want to make a case for it, then you'll need to do it now. Let's put it this way. I'm representing a hand that Ace Queen doesn't do very well against. Sure, but does that matter? You make a strong point. But, but, <laughs> they so need to my, know that. It doesn't matter that you know that. <laughs> my question in my head was: Would this player respect that? Would he? Would he understand that, or would he think I'm in here with Jack Ten? And the answer was: I didn't know, and I was a little bit excited, so I went all in. And you're, and this is why this is here on punt or no punt because. Yeah. Yeah, one one could say it's a fucking stupid decision. Well, who is Stan? Um, who is Stan? Do we think he's, he's a Romanian reg? Who I would say I don't actually. He I think he plays lots of sites because he turns up occasionally on stars. He used to play five hundred zoom a lot, um, and I would say he is lobby lobby scouring. He he's looking for good games. Okay, well, I mean, maybe that's a point towards bluffing, but uh, I mean, I just really don't want to ask someone to fold queen eight here or like ace eight. I just don't know if they do. I think it's optimistic. I love the, the in, I love conceptually the idea of doing this, but in practice, I think it blows. So I am going to give it. I'm going to give it a I pun. Couldn't agree more. I could not agree. More. <laughs> it's, it's theoretically, Ace Queen is supposed to fold most of the time here. Yeah. Um, queen Eight suited. Ace Eight. Ever. Pocket Eights are all snaps. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. um, we do get called, yeah. and. They do have ace queen. Now, yeah. I don't think they ever fold this. So if you do need to get, they need to fold this sometimes. I just think this is yeah. awful. Otherwise, you're just getting jack yeah. 10 fold or yeah. hearts. Well, you don't need to get or... to fold. You can just check back and beat jack 10. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's pointless. You should just win yeah. at showdown. Yeah. Be a blue line warrior. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, also, if he if he bets ace jack too much, which mm. I don't think is a stupid yeah. assumption, 
I think like, oh, check, check. Oh, this guy probably just has like ace five of, of clubs or something, which, you know, is in there. Yeah. Um, whereas actually you've got to be very, very narrow with your betting range on the turn and him over betting suggests that he knows that. But I've seen I've seen things I can't unsee. Yeah. Um, he hasn't been like, called though. Yeah, yeah, I know. I I know people might can... just flick it in the muck with ace jack. Yeah, and there's and, and this guy, I mean, like he he does have a, a strong blue line and not a brilliant mm. red line. That's not like uh, that's not shitting on people. There are some really strong regs who yeah. have that. Um, and some weak. A ones. lot of people, like in that situation <laughs> where you get raised, they will just call forward a hand like ace jack or ace ten. Yeah. So listen, I know you've already already given me the pun. I don't yeah. know why I'm fighting. With this, but, <laughs> like, I was making some assumptions, um, and yeah. and uh, they might be right assumptions. You never know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I don't like it. No, I'm not having this one. I was a bit nervous on the turn because I thought I might give you this one. Then I was like, no, no one's folding this river. You can just check yeah. back and beat the things that, that are probably going to fold or always going to fold. And then I just think that he calls just too much, uh, more yeah. than theory, on the river. because You it's... could tell that I was new to cash games. Yeah. So I was so excited <laughs> by theory back then. And now it's yeah. like, oh, do so I much, actually yeah. want to bluff this range? Yeah. Well, it's 2-1. Yeah. And we've got to go and take hand number four. It's I getting closer. Say I will say this. There are players now who will go really, really... Ben- and it's actually reasonable. We'll go bananas with deuce X of hearts. And at, at, at five, at 500, it's less of a thing because you have to call pretty tight when you're playing, playing against the hijack. There's a lot of players now who, who um, against this tight range, a lot of the bluffing region for uh, out of position when they go 133 or 150 or whatever it is in the check back node, they go for deuce X of hearts or pocket threes, pocket fours, because they unlock so many hands like fives through tens and jacks and all that. So deuce X of hearts is a thing that could potentially have been in there, but I'm not sure um, in 2021, this opponent was going to be doing that. We also just check back and win against deuce X of hearts, but we'll leave, we'll leave it. Not do six of hearts. <laughs> not do six of hearts, but if, you re- if that's really your defense, I think we've reached the pinnacle. Right. Yeah. Hand number four, it's two one. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Hand number four it is two one, the punts are back in the game and lol you play is opening it up. We're 120 deep, four-handed, 1K on PokerStars. We've got 6-5 offsuit. Fold? No. <laughs> no? Uh, uh, if it was 2.5x, I believe we would be mixing 50-50. Okay. At 2.2, this is most of the time call and he's a little under that, so okay. yeah. Sure. Cool. Yeah. I'll try if I went, yep. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, Pun. <laughs> Let's not even play it out. Uh, <laughs> King, 3-4. Pretty good for 6-5 offsuit, to, has to be said. Um, yeah. And obviously, no donking. They go for small bet, which I think is normal. And you have an option between check raise and call. Both seem good. What do you want to do? Yeah, Mix, um, yeah, yeah, mixing mainly. I actually think people oversee bet these boards. Um, so typically, you actually have to be quite careful as the cutoff or the hijack or under the gun because there are a lot of runouts which are extremely favourable to the big blind, i.e., hands that wrap the three and like, cards that wrap the three and the four and make straights, which you as the open raiser just won't have either. A, uh, globally that frequently because you have a wide range, i.e. the cutoff, or B, just because, uh, not at all, because you don't open it from under the gun very often. So, whereas I will be defending 6-5 off like, almost purely as a call, 6-5 suited admittedly will be a 3-bet, but 5 do suited is a pure call. Mm-hmm. So, there's a lot of cards which um, will roll off, which massively diminish the sort of hands you want to see bet. Even hands as strong as Ace King become very uh, bluff catchy if you put lots of money in on further streets and it's a low card. So yeah, uh, you don't. You often will see Ace King and some hands like King Ten and all that checking the flop. Um, so I actually think this board is quite over C bets, which leads me to want to check raise here. But that said, I have plenty of value anyway. Um, like I have three, four suited, pocket fours, pocket threes, which all players pure calls. And then obviously I have king four suited, king three suited, king queen, those sorts of hands. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. So check raising a fair amount then. And you like the fact that people are probably over C bet in this board. So check raise and very large because we're basically saying if we have a value hand, it's very, very good. So yeah. Seems good. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that said, like we we do have some mergers in here, and that's pretty important for later in the hand. Like we're going to have like three okay. X of clubs. Um, yeah. Like, sorry, like we six three of clubs, three five of clubs, occasional four five suited too. So I, I say clubs because I know what's coming. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So, but the reason we go large, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily uh, compute that because we're saying we have good hand, it must be big. Yeah. Um, the reason we go big is because he has a lot of off suit kings, which can continue. Um, the fewer offsuit top pairs an opponent can have, this typically the smaller your raise can be, unless it's one where the nuts changes dynamically an awful lot. So, on like a nine high board, if our opponent bets half pot, 
you don't go for like a pot size raise because a lot of the hands you don't get, have the offsuit nine x which can call. You're relying on them having over pairs, which actually doesn't form an enormous part of their range due to the lack of offsuit nine x. So because he has hands as weak as king nine offsuit, we want to go quite large um, to get value from that when we do have a good hand. Okay. Some very good nuance there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be loath to give you a punt at the end of this hand. Now you've given, oh, given me all, you've given me, you give me all that, and now you're gonna do it off. We yeah. get a free bet, and I mean, calling. We have a very, very good price. Calling seems great. Any nod, any nod to three bet, four bet. Sorry, I don't think so. So typically, when you start getting into three betting and four betting flops, you need mm. to start pulling from blockers because suddenly your your opponents are representing something really good yeah um and this doesn't do that if you and to be honest sorry and this doesn't do that at all exactly so if i had to do that i would be probably looking at ace three suited not that i typically carving (laughs) out many flop uh format ranges but that would be like the perfect one uh presumably it would be like Ace three of clubs would be the good one because it blocks king three suited pocket threes Mm. um and aces importantly but because there really shouldn't be much three betting on this flop, and I've run this sim like so many times to try and cater for this silly play. Like there really shouldn't be. Like you kind of have to figure out in your head. You have to assign a range to a player, right? Mm. Because it's happened. You're in this. You're yeah. in this life. Um, so I would assume that this is going to be like a king four suited, a king three suited sometimes, but mainly king four suited pocket threes. I can imagine absolutely doing this. And sometimes your opponents will do this with aces or king queen. The hand that, like, aces makes great sense because you unlock every king x that I can have. It also has redirect to against the king three or the king four. But if you are doing that, you're sort of condensing me to amazing hands as well. Like, mm. king queen doesn't form that big a part of my range. It's like quite a small part. I three bet king queen suited on uh, pre flop a lot and king queen off. Yes, I could do it, but I would mix it. Um, so aces is a little bit silly king queen so he could do that potentially because he thinks that i have like a lot of and it's very reasonable i could have like an ace three an ace five an ace deuce that sort of had ace six suited these these are reasonable hands and he just wants to get like some extra protection or value so if you are playing three bets i would imagine the range does include those uh it's a strong range so no i don't think i'm going to be carving out a four bet very often uh, although it would be bloody tempting with pocket fours to do that yeah absolutely all right, so we only call. We definitely, obviously, don't fold. The turn is the nine of clubs, as you alluded to, a clubby, a clubby run out, yes, and clubby. we definitely check. Obviously, this card changes nothing. They are basically saying they have the uber nuts, and they probably just always bet this card. I imagine. I can't. I can't see reason yeah. why not to bet this hand, and because they are, I guess they're using small. I, I actually don't agree that small should be done. In fact, okay. I think that typically when players have good hands in this situation, they've got you on the hook. They t- and it's like, it's a fairly dynamic, the nuts changes a lot. Yeah. Um, across a lot of runouts here. Not, not that you should be typically afraid of it. Um, like if a club doesn't roll off, but a seven does, like, I don't think anyone's going to be afraid of shoving for value with a set. That's mm. not really a problem, but there are lots of different ways to not have the nuts. And if a club rolls off, then suddenly you're just like, oh, but this guy could just easily have King Jack of clubs. I'm not that comfortable betting my king four suiters anymore like that that's a problem hmm. so typically like when you've got the player on the hook having done the th- and done the flop three bet i would imagine people start not necessarily going geometrically but me- at least going half pot so that this influenced my river decision massively because i basically didn't give this guy sets on this turn um if you want to like go ahead and like massively exploit me in the future by betting this small sizing <laughs> but, and me not believing you have a set it's not going to change too much for me. I'm not going to make ridiculous heroes. I know where I am in my... Well, yeah, I sometimes do make ridiculous heroes, but um, I know where I am in my range. And all this does is it just allows me to call this sort of hand and allow me to realize my equity where typically I would have to fold, especially with a club in my hand if he goes for like a normal sizing, like $200. Because yeah. like he's also making it very, very difficult for him to bet like a reasonable amount on the river. Yeah, true. Value range. Which he so would want to do if he had a really good hand. Exactly. So I, I just I looked at this and I was like, what kind of hands does he want to do this with? And I was I was really leaning towards the the king queen aces sort of region. Yeah. Um, potentially king three suited, but I really 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 having played with this guy a fair bit, did not expect king three suited to three bet the flop. It just doesn't do that well. Like mm. it loses to king four, 
it blocks three four suited it loses to fours it's thin like yeah. i don't have that many it's like it's like it's like three betting aces which isn't that attractive it does yeah. happen but like it is it's, and it and it can be counterfeit and become quite shit mm. so i really would would have been shocked if he turned up with king three suited but you know what we do yeah. get shocked by the end so yeah <laughs> so we call which i think you've explained yeah. uh yeah. eloquently the river's a club do you think he ever has a flush? I don't think so, right? Never. I really don't. And I think the only flush, well, maybe King Jack of Clubs, but I think this is why I was really, really, this is why I do what I do. But <laughs> the Queen of Clubs is massive because I would imagine the Ace King of Clubs on the on the turn, and I, I'm making it like, this is why it's such a fun yeah. time. I, I'm making a lot of assumptions, but I think they're pretty reasonable. I think most people would agree hmm. that, Obviously, he bet one third on the turn, so he could incorporate ace king of clubs in there. But ace king on the flop, like not many three bets. King queen of clubs, yeah, makes sense. It's like the one that makes sense if he's going to three bet a king. Mm. Um, but the queen of clubs is out there, which a reduces king queen of clubs, but also reduces the number of king queens. And also, king queen is in my range. Yeah. Not only that, three five of clubs, six three of clubs, ace three of clubs. All of these hands are hugely in my range and would not be in his range. If he's betting ace three of clubs on the turn for one third, you know what, mate? You deserve my stack. Well yeah. played, sir. Like, you're fucking weird, but you're well played. Um, so I think actually we have a, a quite a large asymmetrical advantage on uh, the river here in terms of flushes and also two pairs. Like, he, you cannot love life here with king four of no. spades. Like, that, that just doesn't... I mean... Obviously, I'm a, I'm the mug who has the bluff here, but <laughs> I, it's very hard to get here like with some random bluff. Like, would you bluff six five of hearts here? If I you... think you have to. Yeah, I think you have to. I think you have to with five dudes as well. Okay. Um, but you do have like a lot of value. Yeah, you have chunks. Yeah, and you have to have check raised. Like, remember, you're mixing the flop, so you don't get there that often. Like with those hands, yes, probably half the time with each combo, but. Yeah. If you shove here, are you saying that you no longer have a set? No. You, you can still you shove have a set. set. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. I, yeah. That's that's actually very reasonable as well. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're all in then, aren't we? Maybe. Yes, we're all in. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're all in. I, I think there's a little ray of hope in the five of clubs in that I think if he was gonna have some sort of three bet bluff on the flop, maybe it would have a. It, maybe it would be ace five of clubs. Maybe That's something I forgot to mention actually. Yeah, I did. I did like that. I didn't. I thought. I mean, to be honest, if I had the six of clubs, you know what's happening. But <laughs> I did say, "Oh, this is nice. I've got the five of clubs." Yeah. Um. But yeah, that, that's. I kind of thought that. Yeah. Of the six fives, I, I, I kind of, I kind of like. What are you going to do? Just check and lose, like on this river? Like, yeah, there's some rivers that we're just going to have to check and lose on. But I don't think this is it. And even though he has, like, last last hand, it was like the river was a brick, and all the really strong hands are still like, okay, whatever, I call. If you got me, you got me. But here, it's not really. It doesn't really feel like that. It feels like if you have king four, if you have ace king, you know, like you just. But, but you got it. Like, let's let's be like honest, right? We're dealing with an. Sorry, now I'm fighting for it to be a punt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, if you want it, you get um, it. <laughs> flop, flop ranges, right? Yeah. People typically, when they when they aren't sure of a, a no, and like, listen, this guy's been around for ages. He's stood the test of time, so it, and he's made money. Good for him. But that said, no one's solved the game, right? Only, only people like Linus and Marcus and Daryl and the Spaniards are like, and Barak, I'm just listing, you know, all the all the 40k ranks. They're the only ones who are close, but they still make mistakes, or they, you know, make stuff that looks like mistakes, but they're actually hyper exploiting people. I don't know. Like whatever. The point is, it's very difficult to get things perfectly right. And if you're if you want to three bet some uh some board, but you're not sure how to, and let's just say theoretically you shouldn't, like this board you just probably shouldn't, you're probably gonna pull from value before you pull from bluffs, because most people understand they should only bluff a certain way if they have value in it. So, like, I would say that most people, when they do this, have some sort of value hand, and it's less likely that they ha they have like some something shit. So, sure. am I expecting pocket kings to fold? No. No. Am I trying to make him fold aces? Yes. Yeah. Do am you... I expecting him to fold king four suited? I think you sh should damn well hope so. <laughs> no, okay. Well, there we go. Like, that, that, that's, that's basically so the whole the whole thing of like don't try and make good hands fold like. What is a good hand and how good is this hand on this board? Yeah. The problem with 
King Four is. People can just be like, oh, I unblock all the bluffs. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. a thing. That's a thing. Um, pocket fours. Yeah, 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 that's fair. But yeah, it's just a question of like, is your opponent going to flick it in with those? Um, regardless, yeah. because I can't. I can't believe I had King Four on the flop, and this is my board. Fuck this guy. He bluffs sometimes. Cool. Yeah. Not even rolling. Like that would be a problem. I mean, yeah. If you, if the, the, I guess the one thing I would say is, if you get here with all your six five, all your three five six. I mean, do you get a bluff like six three of spades or something? I don't. You never have no, that. No, no. Of course, of course, you never bluff that. Yeah. You so, have to bluff something. You have to bluff something just lower down, and that's the thing. Like you have to pick your bluffs. Yeah. I mean, if if someone's bluffing six three of spades here. Yeah, yeah probably you should fold just... the turn though, no? or the flop, <laughs> something. Uh, yeah, the flop. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, six okay. three spades no, would be uh, quite a rare three be- uh, check raise on the flop, if at all. Yeah. I don't think it would do. I am yeah. concerned about the. I am concerned about the, like yeah, it's gonna be like okay, you've got all your six five. If you've got all your six five off suit because I made it two point one, you know, and you have to bluff all of them, then you're going to be overdoing it. Although I just think that I like this combo the most. I. I, 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 lo- I and I don't like the criticism that everyone thinks that Ponalo Punk goes two two every single time. So you know what? <laughs> Fuck you guys! It's going three one, which means you've already won going into the final hand. Big so This I'm not going to punt. I, I I know you tried to at the end convince me otherwise, but I just think that while there are value hands that are going to be like oh oh fucking whatever call, there are other ones that are in his range that aren't like that are going to be pretty upset and probably fold i think unlike the yeah. last hand so for that reason it's a no punt but that doesn't mean that you're not going to lose another 881 dollars does it yeah yeah because you do <laughs> yeah unless six high is good oh wait it's not oh god i can confirm that's a never never a thing I mean, what on earth has happened here? I mean, if he has this, we're in big trouble, by the way. Yeah, I <laughs> right, I almost, I, want to ch- I almost want to change my, my score. <laughs> I know. And it's just like the most ridiculous flop three bet ever. Like, I, I, can see, I can see how his, how his mind has done it. He's like, oh, well, I have backdoor equity here. And the thing, he blocks stuff he wants to call. I yeah. mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, but it, it's, it's like he's playing it like it's a drawing hand, not a value hand. Like he's only isolating me to high equity yeah. things and really good things, and it yeah. just like, this was like mid downswing as well. I was furious. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, how, how do they have this hand? Like, is I'm... this a fucking sick simulation? <laughs> I mean, in some ways, it's like in some ways, it's like, oh god, if he has that, then it's awful. But like, it's not like we got called by King Three. So yeah, I'm not. I don't feel horrendous about it. Like if he's finding this, I mean, I mean, how the hell are we supposed to know that? I don't think it takes too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. This was this was absolutely a readless yeah. node. Like yeah. I've since it's fine. actually like seen a couple more of these situations. Like, oh, okay, interesting. This is mm-hmm. his strategy. So like, I, it's now a job for me or anybody who sees that sort of play to adjust to it. Now he might well watch this and mm-hmm. just revert. But like that, it's just like it's interesting because I was I was like, oh, okay, shit. Yeah, I played this hand like not terribly, but like it really, really matters mm. to think about that. Yeah, like yeah. that that king unlocking the clubs is a big deal. Yeah, like, if he was sitting there with king seven of diamonds, or oh, sorry, not king seven of diamonds, it's pretty hard to have king seven of hearts. Is he betting the turn uh, turn one third just to buy the showdown? Mm. That's important to know. Yeah, um, and it can change your strategy a bit. Yeah, well, you have I've, one. Part clear, part. This 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 um this was like eighteen months ago. This hand, so mm. like uh yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, he like I'm not shitting on like how how he plays uh, currently. I don't know. I actually haven't seen him in ages. Yeah. No. As soon as I press stop record, you're gonna shit on him. Um, anyway, yeah. we're gonna take hand <laughs> number five anyway, obviously, because I mean it's been saved for last for a reason, and we're gonna go and find yeah. out what that reason is right now. So let's go and take <laughs> hand number five. All right, hand number five, big stealer. This is your victory lap. Although I'm not sure if we're gonna think of it like that at the end of this hand. Um, um, my head is gonna be. <laughs> we get an open from under the gun. Who you, is a recreational? You said so. A very special recreation. A very like, special. Very we love those. Reason why he's got a double stack. Lots of not lots of raising. Not very much folding. Lots of very very like random big bets. Lots of shoves where you wouldn't expect it. So these are all mitigating circumstances for okay. what comes. We do call. Mm-hmm. And we see Queen Can Eight. Three Can yeah. Three bet. yeah, probably yeah. not against this guy though. No, no. no I'll um, go more linear against a player like this. Queen Eight Eight. Check, check. I was gonna say like, if he just bets, then what are we doing here? Because <laughs> I just want to fold. Thankfully, we've made a pair on the turn. Yeah. And yeah. we check again, which is completely super reasonable. And they now yeah. decide to start potting. Right. Now they checked the flop, which I mean, fish do like a trap. 
That's yeah. yeah, that's without question. So I don't think I read too much into into that's this. Snap check pop as well, by the way. Okay, and they still they do snap check with with nuts sometimes as well. Like I'm not putting it past them to have queens or like an eight hit. Definitely not. Yeah. Fold or just he's just Fuck. way too erratic. So so obviously I raise, um, but, <laughs> um, but like there is there is like obviously I know some people would be like, well, why don't you just call if he's erratic? He's yeah. got loads of shit. Just call. But I have like a, quite a distinctive strategy when it comes to this not particular mm. node or anything, but like when it comes to fish who have like fucking everything, mm. and he was like playing fifty percent of hands and he was playing them aggressively. That means that like there aren't really very many rivers in the deck which he can't like which he which king six is like an easy call down. So I when you play like when you're like looking to check raise for value, of course when you're this deep you want to go fucking huge. Yeah, but. Against fish, I, I again, if I was doing this against a reg, I'd probably use a six, and I would probably use like a two hundred, maybe two fifty percent check raise sizing because I'm here with a hand like ace eight, pocket sixes, and then you know occasional boat in the queen eight mm. kind of region kind of thing. Not many hands, but a yeah, six yeah. would just function well because it blocks the pocket sixes, which is like exactly the kind of snap check back now a very good hand that you want to block. But with fish who are very wide and can have hands as bad as like offsuit nine ten or seven five suited, I would go like a smaller sizing. Uh, the reason being, I want to kind of clean up the equity so he's not just sitting there with like king jack and or well, king jack actually isn't that bad. No, king jack is bad because king is live still. But like a hand that can just basically make a pair and then like value bet me. I want to clean up that equity and get him in with the weakest part of his range still. Sure, yeah. Like pot isn't great. I admit that. But also blocking king queen that could, that's a thing. Uh, when somebody checks back, that's the easiest hand to trap. Mm. So I go for a, like a pot size check raise or even a seventy five percent check raise here, just so that he stays in with like. I actually think it might be less. That's small, yeah. Yeah, is that fifty yeah. percent? So I, I try and like basically keep him in with a lot of hands. And the idea was, I was going to bluff catch on bricks that weren't a queen, and I was going to bluff catch on. And I was going to bluff heavily on straight completers that weren't a club, and I was just going to check fold on a club. Okay, we have so a, we, we have, have a plan. The blockers, but, sorry, we have a plan. I'm just not sure how good it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm way. I, I mean, I never do this to fish. I like to have it when I have, when I'm playing against the fish. I really do. And I'm, yeah, I'm, this, is, this is actually just kind of like a value bet. This is just a value yeah, yeah, bet. But sure. I'm also just trying to yeah, I'm trying to clean up the yeah. equity a bit. You just want him to call Jack Ten, like stuff like that. Ten yeah. nine. Jack Ten would be spicy. <laughs> nine seven, <laughs> nine ten, seven five. Yeah. Clubs, loads of hands that I think could yeah. call. In our plan, this was a river we were going to check. Correct. So we do check. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> and they go all in for a million X pot. They go, now, they go for the old five X potter. Why in the living shit would you ever want to call this river? Because <laughs> in, what, you don't want to call it? I really, really don't. I, I, unblock, I wouldn't be here to begin with, but if I'm here... I'm, we unblock all his bluffs. Sure, but like, do, do fish go all in for like a million X pot with bluffs? That's the thing. Like he had been, he'd been doing a lot of big shoves. So like, I know I'm like trying to like set the narrative that this is like his, his style, but it is his style. The thing is as well, like Ace-Queen is very much a trap on the flop, like a, a classic fish trap, but he's never got Ace-Queen anymore when he goes for this sizing. So I was yeah. like, well, I've got... I block kings. kings. He wouldn't. I really, 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 really doubt he would pop the turn with queens. So sorry. Did I say I block king, uh, kings? Yeah. I, block, I, block, I block. I block. I don't. I do block kings. <laughs> you do block kings. It's great. Great. I block, mate. I block sixes. <laughs> I, block sixes. Uh, I would be stunned if he potted quads or queens. Yeah. Uh, and he no longer has ace queen, and he has so many hands. And yes. Yes, Nick, I am aware that people can choose any size and they want between one big blind and the maximum. No limit hold him. But mate. this was very much like his style. He was doing a lot of he was a red line lad. Um so I just yeah, but... I, I, I thought I, I didn't snap. That's, okay. that's oh brilliant. Good I'm glad to hear yeah. you thought about it. Yeah. I mean, oh, there's just no way you're getting this one through me. I don't care. You're actually calling for one point seven. What if I win? What if you what if I don't I care? Win? I've already made my decision. This is a this is a punt. I mean, what on earth is going on here? I thought we'd talk about this for longer. Jack okay. ten, I mean, we could talk about it for as long as you like, but I don't think I'm ever going to get anywhere else. Jack, you want him to... Ha to I, I don't think... I haven't played with many fish that... Sh I, I know... I, I played against a lot of fish and almost always when they use this sizing, they've got something good. In what my, do they have? An eight. 
they want an eight after our check raised the turn. They go for. We know they don't want an eight here, but they don't know that. Okay. I don't think. What about, what about a, a player who is playing 50% of hands, all of them aggressively? and can have hands as bad as 9-10 offsuit in their range. I, uh, to be fair to you, I am boiling this down to as much as, and as reductive as, I don't think fish shove for this sizing with 10-9. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it. But I, 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 I'm not a fish whisperer. I am one. So I don't know if this is true or not, but I really don't want to call this hand. I feel like we can just call good hands. Also, man, like, and this is like <laughs> another thing, like, I love, I love what your head's at, to be honest, and I wish I had that <laughs> thought process, but um, honestly, like, this is obviously irrelevant to someone who plays uh, this logic game logically, mm. but the ace could well be a scare card that he thinks is a scare card. Right, okay. And just be like, well, fuck That's this true. guy, he's sitting there with King Queen, which yeah. obviously I, actually, to be fair, I should be. Maybe he's actually an uber genius yeah. and knows that the 50% sizing is merged and I have King Queen in my range. So uh, the ace is like a scare card. We are reaching again. <laughs> I, I, look, if you're going to call and you do really genuinely, obviously you do genuinely, you're not going to stick 1.7k here unless you genuinely believe they can be bluffing, then this hand makes a lot of sense because you block a, a boat that he can very credibly shove and you do unblock pretty much I can't see what what king he would have and yeah. I think a lot of fish will just be like okay king you know king high is that good, good? so no pun no pun good but but still what it boils down to for me is that I just don't think fish use this sizing as blood but I, I, I could be wrong I mean, maybe you win you know what? maybe you, know you what? win you know what 99 times out of 100 I would just fold without even thinking but he was such a special fish yeah okay fair I, enough I fair had, enough. A, had a real think about fair this enough. look you've already won so you don't need to give me too much grief for giving you a punt for this one and I can't really see how I you just, can... I just hope you you are ready to eat your words I would love to be wrong yeah and it's great for content but I, I'm imagining oh okay just top boat is that all <laughs> don't be so results yeah. oriented Nick. because this again is not a punt. they're not supposed to shove this but they just do because they're like, oh, amazing hand. Let me actually, get the most money. It's actually probably a shove, you know. Like, it really? actually theoretically probably is because I have 8x. Yeah. I just have 8x in my range. Yeah, I mean. It probably works. Like, it probably, obviously, it makes 8x indifferent theoretically. But if I'm calling a 6, it's fucking genius. But yeah, like. What an unlucky 8X hand, man. It would be indifferent. Sorry? What an unlucky hand. Such a, was, it's a cool, was, it's a cooler, bro. Fortunate. I mean, one of us hits two outs. Yeah, one of us. <laughs> this is true. Well, you, brutal, you've won three two, regardless. Yeah. And we're gonna go. I've lost a lot of money. You have lost a lot of money, but that's okay. You've won hearts, and what really <laughs> matters, hearts or money. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's go to a quick summary of what we've seen today before we leave you. Lovely. Okay, guys, that was pot or no pump with Big Steeler. I had a fucking great time. I hope you did as well, Big Steeler. Have you enjoyed it? I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I actually really enjoyed, well, I mean, I, it was completely futile, but enjoyed yeah. trying to convince you that last one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you agree it's a pun, or are you actually... Fucking love that yeah. hand. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I love my thought process. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I was telling you about being mid down swing and hand yeah, four? Yeah, yeah, No, uh, it's actually because I kept doing this. Yeah, true. <laughs> well... In true no pun or no pun fashion in the outro, we do like to push a large pile of money over to your opponent. Who thoroughly deserves yeah. it, by the way. Three thousand seven hundred dollars. Um yeah. but like he, hit run, he hit and run, by the way. Deserved again, completely. <laughs> Everyone on the table should be like, why? <laughs> why have you done this to me? Um but yeah, phenomenal set of hands. Um you were messaging me before wondering if these were good enough, and I told you I'm not gonna look because I never do. They definitely were good enough. These will live Lovely. long in the memory of the Pun and no Punt uh era. And I might watch it back myself. Yeah, I mean absolutely. I I appreciate the view. You know, who else is going to watch you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I appreciate you coming on, man. And maybe we'll do some more some more stuff in the future if people enjoyed it. I really enjoyed uh, having you on for the show. So if there's, awesome. something, if there's something else we can do, that would be that would be great. Um, maybe you can take a look at some of my absolute puntery at 100 now. That might be fun. <laughs> God, I'm losing so much money. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. <laughs> Not as much money as this, by the way. This is pretty much okay, my good. entire downswing for the year <laughs> in oh, one hand. <laughs> well, I make you feel better about that then. <laughs> Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's Pot and Pot. If you did enjoy it, subscribe to the channel and drop a like on it to let me know if you want to get some more guests on in the future. Hopefully, we'll have some more. As good as this, it'll be, it'll be difficult to top this, though. Um, Big Steeler, thanks again so much for coming on. And I will see you guys on the next one. All the best. <laughs>